to the channel. I am Lady Nika in with uh, Tuesday night's episode of the Have and Have Not. It was the return for the remainder of this season. It was good. I, I tell y'all all the time, don't, you know, don't count Tyler out. Don't count him out, honey. He from the hometown. He from New Orleans. And, you know, you, you just can't never count our ass out. You just can't. You never know. You just, just stick with us. Sometimes we flips and we flops. But we eventually come back and we give you what it is that you want. So, I, that's the reason why I didn't throw the towel in on Tyler Perry as of yet. I'm hoping now that... Hopefully, we see that he, he's bringing it so far in this premiere episode of the remainder of the season that it'll trickle on over to the uh, If Loving You Is Wrong because he was slipping on both of these shows, but he really slipped on that one. So, we're going to hope that this is the beginning of the resurgence of Tyler Perry. Now, before we get into the review, I will have down in the description box a link to go over and vote for Bianca Brooks as the face, new face of Pink for Lustrous products. Um, it, you can vote every 24 hour. It doesn't matter, you know, long as you got a, uh, long as it's every 24 hours and it's a valid email address, you can submit your vote for her. And I'll be putting that in my videos every time I remember, all the way up until May the 19th. So. We're just asking that, you know, if you don't mind and you want to do something to support this lady in her campaign to become the new face of pink, that you vote once a day, every 24 hours for her to be able to possibly win this this time, this time and, and we can move on from that, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about the have and the have nots. Veronica, girl, you deranged. <laughs> That's all I can say. Veronica is deranged. Do you hear me? I almost felt sorry for her because you could tell that seeing David uh, moving in with another woman in a house that she originally wanted for her own self and him really was hurting her. But then again, I have to remember that when you do wrong, karma shows up sometime in the least, when you least expect it. And that's what Veronica, she in her due season of karma. Because everything going astray for her. Now that behavior she had outside, <laughs> he's an <in> Erica home, <laughs> is why he's so over her. You see what I'm saying? That's why he's so over her. She come to the house shocked that she see that he didn't got this house. Uh, she decides to throw a brick through the window, which brings him down. And girl, I see why you climbed. Did y'all see Deacon David, baby? Ooh, the Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. That that man fine. I know he'll let you know for the younger people, you might not have an appreciation for that. But for him to look that good at his age, girl, yes, God. Anyway, he out there trying to figure out why is you here. Girl, why are you here? You out here acting a fool. She in there talking about you throwing she out there talking about you throwing me away for a whore. Um this was the house that I wanted. You said we couldn't afford. And he like, Veronica, you have lost your entire damn mind. Our son is in jail because of you. She's talking about he's there because he need to be there. He guilty. Guilty of what? All y'all get this up up on this show because ain't none of y'all been doing the right things. But you mad because he done moved on. But the things you do is the reason why he's giving up on you and wants to be far, far away from you. Not to mention, he telling you, girl, you got a whole restraining order out here. You violating your restraining order. Why are you here? So he tell Erica, go call the cops. And I said, that's what you should do. Now, she started advancing up on him. Now, not looking like she wanted to really fight him, but she pleading. And he wasn't here for it because he told her, girl, look, mm-mm, don't touch me. So he pushed her back. She going to sit. I, help, he's a hurting me. I said, see, this is part of why he don't want to have nothing to do with you. Then she threatening that she know all, she know where all the bones buried. Well, he know all the, where the, all the bones in your life is buried too, girl. So if you want to blow the spot up, just know that when you blow it up, you're blowing it up for everybody. He wasn't shook or stirred by that. You out here thinking that 
he don't care nothing about you at all. But how can he care about you when you don't care about yourself or y'all child? All because this boy is gay, you hate his guts and feel like he need to be in the penitentiary system. Really, Veronica? Then when the man tell you just leave, I don't have nothing else to do with you. You in your fields and trying to make a scene. Erica come back out and say, the police on the way. You want to start attacking her. You ain't attacking the right one, baby. You don't attack her. It's your man you should be mad at. But then again, when you look at it, you really can't be mad at your man because you put him in a position to where he don't want you no more. It ain't like he creeping. He told you it's over. It's done. We finna divorce. It, it ain't no me and you no more. It's you and whoever them people is that live inside your head, and it's me and her. Even though that ain't the best thing in the world either. Eventually, Veronica has to leave, but she leaves with the threat that you wasn't nothing without me. I made you, and without me, you'll be nothing. You throwing me away for this whore? We shall see. Her threats yet again. He stood there, he saw her drive off, and then Erica is in there acting like she ain't used to that. Girl, stay in your role, because you told this man the reason why you in the situation you in is because you had an abusive lover. So if you had an abusive lover, what Veronica doing ain't nothing new to you, but you acting like you bad and bougie and you ain't used to this. So he had to remind you. Then you gonna say, well, I just don't, I don't understand how you can continue to deal. He said, it's not easy, but I'm trying to be patient with her. And he begging her to understand and not leave. I was like, that was game. She wasn't going nowhere. No way. Where's she going? Remember, Candace got her by the clit. I'm just saying. She is. She got her, but she can't go nowhere. So, you know, he said he going to deal with Veronica or whatnot. Girl, you didn't stay in your role. David. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I gave y'all everything in that little episode that was important. That little scene anyway. Well, I did. Because all happened out there was she showed up there, threw a brick, act a fool for a few minutes, but didn't take it too far. Police were supposedly called, and you were expecting a neighborhood like what he living in. The police would have answered immediately. But she's able to act a fool, clown him out there, try to get into it with Erica, Clown him some more and leave without the police ever showing up. Girl, see Tyler, that's, that's some hoes we talking about. The police should at least showed up, but they didn't. But we're going to leave that way it said, and we're going to go over there to Miss Hannah because she done got her makeover, honey. And I'll admit, Hannah did look really nice compared to how she looked season one all the way to now. That was a big improvement. I wasn't here for that 90s uh, stripper tease look she had because she did it like a 90s prostitute. But it was cute the way they pulled it together. But, of course, you know, Benny ain't going to be feeling that. He won't know where you going with that tight-ass dress on. We ain't going to wear thought gear. And who 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 you going with? She ain't trying to give him no information because he grown. I mean, she grown. But you know, boys, how they feel about their mamas. My son take me through this every every other weekend, especially if I got a good little old date and he don't know nothing about it, child. He be trying to check me to the guards to find out what I'm doing. And he's told me before I ain't going to do a certain thing. I laughed that out because last time I was checked, my birth certificate say at this age, fully grown. So, I was here for her. Then Derek arrived and he mesmerized and say that Hannah looked beautiful. And she was just blushing. And I was happy for Hannah because she needs some happiness in her life. She need to do something with herself. She tried to introduce Derek to Benny. But Benny wouldn't even shake his hand and wanted to know who are you. When uh, Where you think you going with my mama? Hannah put paid Benny dust. And his attitude, and she told Derek that she was ready. Benny said she couldn't go, and she was like, boy, bye. Uh, I'm grown. This is my business, and until you're ready to tell me your business, stay out of mine. And walked out and told him, good night, Benjamin. And he's not feeling it, so he didn't got mad at the makeover girls and told them they need to pack up and leave. I said, just typical son behavior. You want to tell her how she should run her life, but you don't want her telling you nothing about yours. Boy, sit down. Now, Veronica just had her feelings uh, shook, okay? She just had her feelings slammed by David. Instead of her going home and, and sitting her ass down somewhere and trying to figure out how do I get myself back together, she go over there to torture Jeffrey a little bit down to the jail.
She didn't have the boy put in the interrogation room. She come in there, he looking disgusted. She tell me, hey, son, he ain't even want to speak to her, but she manipulated him, making him think that if I just comply, she'll help me get out this situation. So he give her the old proverbial hello, mother. She asking, he asking to get out of there, and she said she couldn't believe that she put... Uh, he said he can't believe she put him in jail. And she said, well, I warned you, son. I warned you not to try me. And you did. He said, it's horrible in prison. And she said, well, you're not exactly in prison, but I would agree prison is a whole, it's ten times worse than this situation you're in right now. She taunting him is what she was doing. She said she'll do well. She said he'll do, he'll do fine in there, you know. She never thought that her son would be more feminine than her. She never thought her son would be in jail, especially a black man in jail. She didn't want that for her son, but he tried her, and she had to show him who 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 the boss is, who the real queen bee is, is what she said. He said, she was like, I told you to come home. I told you to be a good man to uh, Melissa and raise your child. But where were you, Jeffrey? He said, I was down to the hotel with him. She said, no, you was down to the hotel with her. And basically, she made him say that he was at the hotel with her, and he was wrong. And he's like, once he said that, he like, well, can you get me out of here? And she was like, I don't know. You in the system now, son. I have to check and see what I can do, but I'm going to try to do something for you. I was like, why you started playing with this boy? And, and when we going to get past this? Your only beef with this boy is he's gay. Being gay ain't the end of the world. That's his lot in life that he'll have to deal with if, in fact, it's something to deal with. Because last time I changed, God loves us all. Flaws and all. Whether we doing what he told us to do or not, he has a love for us. And I don't understand why this woman can't over, she can't get past the fact. See, it to me, it's not about him doing the right and the wrong thing. It's about her being able to control him. She wants to be able to control her husband as well as her child. And everybody ain't just here for letting you run all over them. You may have controlled him when he was underage, but now that he's a grown man and he done came out that closet, girl, you can't do nothing but sit down and accept that or find yourself in a situation where don't neither one of the two men in your life want to have nothing to do with you. That would be your son and your husband. Because both of them really checked out. The only reason why uh, Jeffrey halfway dealing with her is because he needed her to undo what she did to get him in jail. And that's messed up. She told him he in the system now. He'll be all right. But she going to check into it. And she leave him. Only to see Justin in the hallway. Call him her. And instead of him keep going. He stops to go at it with her. So he's basically saying. You know. I heard you had an accident. She's like somebody ran me off the road. He was like. Well do you think. You 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 think somebody ran you off the road? No, she said I lost control of my car and ran it off the road. He said that or did somebody. Which gives her the inclination now that he didn't been the one that tried to run her off the road. He also said that him and Jeffrey were gonna be moving into an apartment together as soon as he get out of jail and Veronica say he ain't getting out. If that's what he wanna do, because he had just told her he was gonna conform. He was going to go back home with her. He was going to be a, a father to this baby by Melissa and be a good husband to him. Her. Just let him out of there. So she is stringing him along with, let me see what I can do because you're in the system now. It's a lot more difficult. But had you just done what I told you to do in the first place, we wouldn't be sitting in this spot right now going through what we're going through. So now he he got to sit there and wait. But on the outside of that door, she telling uh. Uh, Justin, because you say that y'all finna be together, guess what? I got a, I got a cliff note for you. I got a, a ram in the bush for you because you ain't getting out. He ain't going to get out, so he's not going to ever be able to be that man that you want him to be. And Justin said, we'll see about that. See, his crazy is on the line of her crazy. So I don't know who going to win this thing, but I can tell you one thing. More and more people showing Veronica they ain't scared of her, and I'm loving that, honey. Now, Hannah on her date, and it's a nice place, nicer than she planned. He was uh, told by Catherine 
that she was getting a makeover, so he stepped it up a little bit and took her there. He offers her a drink and said, and she says she don't really drink that much, but when she do, she drink a beer, and she don't think that this is the type of establishment that would allow her to drink a beer. So he offered her a wine. Now, for Hannah not to know what wines are or different types of wines, she jam sure knew in that moment, because, but she said, I only know what I know because I've been serving white folks for the longest, and this is what rich white folks say. So he orders her a drink, and um, they talk. So, you you know, he asked, did, uh, so she used to work for Catherine. She said, yeah, I did. As a matter of fact, I'm going back to work for her again. And he said, you like your job? She said, well, it's honest work. And I, I, I believe in honest work. So he was like, you know, I believe in honest work too. That's what I like about how my life is. I, I do an honest day's work and everything is good with me. So they discuss how the younger people these days don't appreciate the struggle. They don't want to do no hard work. And he asked her what she talking about Benny. And she said, no, not Benny. He got a good work ethic. That boy works his butt off. She was talking about Candace, but she didn't go into details. And then she asked him about his kids. And we learned that he got three kids all in college. And he admits it's been a struggle, but he's been able to push through. They discussed how he met his his wife, his kid's mom, and, you know, he admits he does miss her. And Hannah understood grief and mourning because she going through that with uh, getting over little Quincy's death and whatnot. So they don't want the evening to be brought down. So they decide that once they finish dinner, they're going to go out dancing. And she was good with that. And I don't blame her, especially if your kids is adults. They got to make their own mistakes and, and, you know, learn from them. All we can do once they become adults is just pray for them and try to guide them. But we can't make them do nothing. And in the meantime, in between time, while they learning their lessons, live your best good life because you only get one. Your whole life ain't surrounded around making sure these kids is good when they grown. You got to learn how to cut that apron string. It's something I'm learning. I'm t I'll be the first to admit, it, it's a very difficult thing. I, I always used to talk that, you know, trash when I was younger about when my kids get grown, how I'm going to be footloose and friends, fancy free. N I'm footloose and fancy, fancy free, but I still find myself sometimes still going that extra mile. And it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with it until it starts interfering with you having a happy life, too. Because you fulfill the prophecy. God told you to do this job and do it to the best of your ability. When you done did all you can do, then all you can do is stand and go over there and live your best life. And let them figure it out for themselves. Keep them prayed up so that they can have that armor of God, that protection over them, the blood of Jesus, you know, all over them and protecting them. But you can't lead their lives. And sometimes all of that, they, they fail for you too. Because some people's destiny is to do what it is they do that may bring their life into an end earlier or it can end up with them destroying their lives being locked up in a cage for the rest of their life or maimed in some kind of way you just never know all i can say is i feel like it's about time for hannah to have her own interests beyond her children and, and being a maid for Miss Cryer. She deserves to have that. And it's good to see that Tyler is writing this into the show. Because in reality, she eventually woke up long before now. And she'll be trying to live her best good life. It ain't nothing wrong with enjoying the company of a man. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And I know you ain't supposed to do that premarital sex thing. And I'm not suggesting anybody do. All I'm saying is enjoy yourself. You only got one. And when it's all said and done, everything and everybody you worried about going to still be doing what it is they was doing. And you laying up and never coming maggot food. Hell to the now. Anyway, Benny done come over to Veronica house now. Because remember, on, before the season ended, it went on a little break. Melissa had texted him from Veronica's phone, telling him to come over there. So when he get there, she done got herself, you know, all prepared. It's probably smelling good because he was smelling on her and stuff. That's why I say she must be done got herself prepared. And he like, where Veronica? She was like, she not here. He was like, really? So he's standing there trying to figure out why would she text me and tell me to come? I might need to sit here a few minutes. The whole time Melissa flirting with him, telling my look. I'm going to tell you, I called you over here because I, I know you're not attracted to her and maybe we could finish where we started. He started apologizing, look girl, I ain't mean for us to go where we went. You know, been the community did. 
Anybody can get it from what it looked like. But he was like, I ain't intend for that to happen. And she was like, yes, you did, because I intended for it to happen, too. So she started coming on to him, kissing on him and stuff. And you can see his resolve is slowly diminishing. He slowly wanting to do this thing, but she he nervous because see Veronica is gonna text him, and so he figured like she is pretty much on point. She might be running a few minutes late, but she gonna come here. Melissa said she ain't coming, cause I text you from her phone. He was like, why? She said so we can finish what we was we started, cause I know you're not attracted to that old ass woman. So she started putting her feminine walls on him, and then saying, you know, he's sitting on the couch talking about, well, she didn't throw him on the couch getting ready to do the rodeo, and um, he told me, what if she see my car? She was like, she ain't coming back, so they getting it in right there on Veronica's couch. Now, we got Candace over at the hotel trying to convince uh, that boy named Oscar Brandon, whatever one you want to call him this week. That she interested in this uh, plot to infiltrate Charles Obama establishment and find out dirt on him. Now, he not convinced she really want to go along with it. So, he trying to tell her the highlights. All you got to do is sit in the White House be pretty for four, four to eight years. You're going to be able to get your book out of this situation. You're going to have money that you never thought you'd have before. Because, Candace, you need to do something different. Trying to get at these crowds and their money ain't going to work. So, she playing it like she listening to him. But, she ain't really feeling that. She, she offered him a drink. What made him, with him knowing that she a crook just like he is, I don't understand why he would accept that drink, but he did. And when he realized that she done spiked it, it's too late. She telling him to lay down and get you some rest. I'm not going to be involved in no situations that you got going on against Charles Obama. I'm not interested in that. It's something else I'm looking for. So... He passes out. She gets in the computer, his computer, and what she doing from what I think she's doing, she's transferring the funds that Oscar had gotten back from um, Wyatt's inheritance into that private account she had Veronica set up through Lord down at the bank. She going to transfer all of that money over there. So she really, in a, in a way, getting all the money that Oscar played her out of, and she going to get some extra. She done called down to the bar and told the little bartender dude who in cahoots with her with this prostitution ring. They said, uh, running outside of the, or inside the Artesian Hotel. Look, keep eye on the girls, and if this goes away, I think it should go. We ain't gonna never have to run another trick, period. And he like, okay. But he, ain't t she didn't give him no information. Now, Veronica finally come home, and she catch Melissa and Bennett at it on her sofa. And child... I feel like this about it. First of all, this is what I think. I think if, I don't think Melissa pregnant, but I think if she come up pregnant, we already know who gonna be the daddy because he done raw dogged her twice, okay? But she walk in there and, you know, Melissa jump up off the D and Ben is saying that they, they t you know, it ain't what he what she think. And I'm like, well, what the hell could it be other than what she think, bruh? But that's what he was, he was giving her, honey. That was what he was giving her. He said <coughs> they wasn't doing that. And uh, I'm like, okay, so you steady line. You ain't good at that. Veronica's asking why he in her house, and he said he came to see her. And Melissa came on to him. Melissa laughing her ass off and say he's not attracted to your old ass. And uh, Benny didn't deny it. <laughs> you can see that, you know, he... She, that kind, you can see a tinge of hurt in her face because two times today she done been rejected by a man. Her husband got a whole nother woman up in the house with him, and then he she just getting told by this uh uh by this girl Melissa that her ass is old and outdated and this man don't like her like that. And he ain't he ain't stepping in saying, Well, no, nah, it ain't like that. He basically going along with it so all her little feelings crushed. She said, uh, yeah, I guess he do want you. He don't want me. He want your stupid ass. She said, you let your mama, you let me manipulate you. You let your mama manipulate you. But I'm going to show you how it is when a grown, grown woman plays a game. And she went to walk off from her, baby. And when she went to walk off from Melissa, Melissa had had enough. She grabbed her by that damn ponytail and yanked it off of her. And they went to tussling with Benny in the middle trying to break it up. Girl, I want to see them fight. I ain't lying. It's about time. Get her, Melissa. Get her. 
Baby Jimmy and Katie still sitting over at Wyatt's waiting on him. And then they talking between the two of them. She talking about she can't believe Wyatt spent as much as he did in the uh for this damn place. And say that's something Jim would do. Jim talking about whatever, you know. And she went so far to say she went with Jim. And she never met Jim. She probably have her Latin boy toy off on the beach somewhere getting her back cracked. I said, come through, Katie. Come through. Anyway, Wyatt eventually walks in, sees them, and immediately, get out. Get out of my house. He wants them out. He tries to call the police, but Jim took the damn phone from him. And then him tussling with Jim a little bit, Jim felt that he had something in his pocket. So he go in there, he pulls it out, and it's a bag of cocaine that he bought from Homeboy down at the bar. Jim is like, I thought you said you told me you didn't need this. Catherine is just upset, like, my God, he's still putting his life in danger, and he almost just died. She's saying he don't need it. Jim say he don't need it, so Jim said, I'm going to show you you don't need it. So he go to the kitchen, and he about to pour the uh, coke down the drain. Of course, why you trying to stop him, you know, talking about he need this, and, and child, Jim find that kitchen knife, bust that bag open, he start pouring that stuff down the drain. Catherine behind why you're trying to calm him down saying he don't need it and stop fighting his daddy He turned around and get her a slap from the motherland. He slapped her from Wakanda She slid well her dunk, stunt double slid across the floor Then Jim sees it and like boy you hit your mama He went to try to he was about to go and check on Catherine and get up off the floor Baby he done white that drug and he, that desire to, that crackhead strength we be talking about It jumped up and he Bopped uh, Jim across the head with the damn wine bottle. He laying on the floor. Now him and Catherine both trying to recover. For some reason, there is a bus on the kitchen counter that he grabs in his rage of his father interfering and, and pouring his good cocaine down the uh, sink. He goes to lift it up as if he's going to hit this man in his head with it. And it cut off right there. I said, girl, come on, Tyler. Come through. Come through with this first episode. I was excited, girl. I love that. I love that. That's what he needs to be giving us. I thoroughly enjoyed Tuesday night's review. I mean, episode. I don't know who don't. Some of y'all might be off of it because you just done gave up on him. But I haven't. I enjoyed it. And the... The reviews, I mean, the previews of what's to come is going to be good. Somebody going to die, y'all. I think somebody is going to die. So, let's just get in the pen. Tell me who y'all think going to die. I can't say Veronica because Veronica is a main character. And very rarely, main characters that's been carrying the show leave. But it does. there's a chance it could happen. So, who y'all think... Give me at least three people you think going to die. Because they saying more than one going to die in this season. So I'm just curious as to who it's going to be. I don't know, y'all. I'm going to tell you who I would like it to be. Wyatt. He can go. Y'all know, for those of y'all who me and me, y'all know I don't see it for Wyatt. I can't stand it, boy. Oh, I can't stand him. So he can go. Oscar can go. We might be seeing Oscar go next week because he, he ain't waking up like he's supposed to after she done spiked his drink. So I'm 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 gonna say Wyatt. I'm gonna say um Oscar. But who else, y'all? Erica. Cause remember she killed Maggie Day in a roundabout way. Could be. So my three my three uh picks are Wyatt, Oscar, and K and and Erica. Y'all get in the pan and let me know who y'all think gonna be uh RIP'd in this good little season. And that's it. That's all I have for you on this episode of the Have and Have Nots. Y'all let me know what your thoughts and opinions are uh, on the overall episode as well as who you think gonna die off in this season. Y'all let me know all of that down in the pan. I'm gonna be down there vigilant to talk with y'all. Okay? That's it. That's all. Remember the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, share this video wherever it is you share videos, and we're going to talk about Black and Crew next. Peace.